Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Jibs from PA Games. I'm also excited to be here. <laughs> I'm a one person similar to uh, Japes here, also known as PA Games. Uh, so I've been trying to, to get visibility, I've been doing a lot of these like streams and these, uh, you know, uh, videos and podcasts and stuff. And so, uh, yeah, PA Games was like, I think he, uh, I think he might have stock in Silver Spook live streams because he's, he's like always in, he's like always in the streams, uh, and long time, uh, uh, friend, I want to streaming I, so I don't look like an idiot streaming by myself. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and uh, he's been um, working on his game Neon Sword, which I've been keeping an eye on because it's a very cool cyberpunk game. Uh, Neon Sword, transport yourself to a dystopian city where life is lived on the edge, a city bathed in neon, casting light over your nocturnal nightmares. So um, it's currently in production. It's it started out as 2D cyberpunk RPG, but now it is 3D it made in Unity, uh, stylized art style. Kind of reminds me a lot of Deus Ex, my favorite game of all time. I just played some of that like last night. So uh, I'm really excited to. I, I really want to try this out and play it once once there is a demo available. Uh, I like everything I've read and seen about it. You should immediately like you know maybe pause the podcast and check it out and come back. You're a one person show, right? A one one guy working on this. Yeah, one guy doing it all, just like yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gotta we gotta stick together. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a tough it's tough work, man. It is a lot of work. Um, so I res I respect I respect anybody who can is insane enough to take on that amount of work of trying to make an entire game. <laughs> um, uh, RPG uh, by themselves. I mean, it's it, it is maybe this is something we can talk about. Um, I haven't talked about this a lot. I don't know. I want to try try not to retread too much ground on the Silver Spoon podcast, so it doesn't sound like a broken record. But I think like. One thing I noticed is uh, when you're doing it by yourself, like if you're an indie developer working by yourself, uh, I, I like to joke that, you know, it's kind of like being a writer is kind of like, you know, being a public schizophrenic liar in that you're making up, pretending to be all these different characters in your story, you're talking to each other, and, you, and, then, you, and then you write it down, and then, and then, and then you, uh, and it's all lies, and so you're like a you're delusional schizophrenic, and then you, then you share it to the world. And then people give you money, and that's kind of crazy. But making a game by yourself, it's like being the writer, right? Plus, you gotta be the artist. Plus, you gotta do the programming. Plus, you gotta do marketing and the money and the accounting and all that other stuff. It's just crazy. I don't know. To me, it's, it's like wearing a lot of hats, and it, it is tough. But um, but uh, it's easier now than it used to be because of, what do you what do you think? What what is it like? Like having to work on one thing and then jump to the other thing, and you know, what is that like for you? So <laughs> what I try to do is break it up so that say. A couple of days I'll be working on just programming completely and then I'll go like to modeling for a couple of days and then I'll split up like that rather than doing it in bits and bobs everywhere <laughs> but it's yeah it it does feel like you've got something wrong with you at the end of the day <laughs> so so the modeling stuff is uh what are you using to do that part of it the modeling um it's actually a voxel program um called cubicle I think I can't actually oh, remember its name I noticed the voxel, the style is kind of pretty popular now. I mean, like, there's a few games that have that. I'm sure you heard of the, is it the last night or late last night, the one that's coming for Xbox? Yeah, yeah. Is that is that? I don't know if that was made with the same program. Maybe not, but it's a similar style, right? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, um, yeah, it's Cubicle that I use. It's it is good. I'd rather do it in high definition, but doing that all by myself, it's it take forever. So, uh, so as I mentioned before, like kind of, I kind of take on the public speaking part of the job because um, uh, I'm basically I don't have a publisher. So, can you say anything about your publisher or how that's been, like working with those folks? Um, the they are brilliant to work with. Um, I don't know what I can say and can't say about them to be fair, but. They're a good load of people. The it's for charity, and the worth being with. <laughs> I can't really say too much because I'm not sure what I can and can't say about them. Right, right, right. Well, I guess you. Well, I mean, on on your website, it, you have Keystone Games on there, so obviously that's okay. I mean, you, we can all say that you're being published by Keystone Games. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, Keystone Games, uh, I I checked them out and. Uh, yeah, I really liked uh, everything I heard of and read about them. You know, as I understand it, uh, half of all the the profits go to a, a charity, uh, largely for the disabled yeah, children. Yeah, disabled exactly. children with life limiting diseases and such. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, yeah. So this is like a pretty cool publishing company. I mean, of all potential publishers to be with, I mean, this is one thing like I've heard a lot is that you know if you do go out and try to get published, you gotta you know if you're indie, you gotta be really careful because you know there's a lot of 
shady folks out there, you know, who are, you know, they'll, they'll say they'll publish you, but then, you know, you end up getting ripped off and <laughs> six months in, you know, you made a million dollars on Steam, but that's all vanishing into yeah, it's the, all publishers, <laughs> the publishers, the uh, publishers, yachts and mansions. <laughs> it's like, what happened to all my money? Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. Key, I, Keystone's game, I mean, I, I mean, if they upfront, they tell you that they're going to give half of the money to, um, you know, to these, to this charity, then I think that, um, and, and everything I've seen and heard and read from them is like they seem like a you know um, I talked a little bit to some of the people at Keystone Games and they're they're yeah really cool uh, awesome group. Um, this is the sort of group that I would like to be published by if, if I had to because I don't think I, w I wouldn't I wouldn't want to just you know give over the keys to something like Neofeud to you know or Neofeud two or Dismaton or any of the games I'm working on. I wouldn't just hand that over to you know some publisher who's gonna be like oh I want you to change all of this and throw all that away and also we're gonna bring this whole team on and totally change your game. Oh yeah, definitely. And, I'll be like, you know what? No, nah, I'm, I'm too cyberpunk for that. I'll give you the finger, man. I was just like, <laughs> how about I give you the finger and you give me all the money you stole? <laughs> no, but um, yeah. So I, I, have you made it? Is this your first commercial game or have you made other games in the past? Or? I've made other games in the past, but they're not on sale now or active anywhere. There might be a few online somewhere, but none that I'm selling myself. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, do you have a release date? Um, not an exact release date, it's just 2018. I'm thinking, because it's such a big game, I don't want to point down an exact time and be like, this is when it's going to be released, but it definitely will be 2018. <laughs> okay, 2000, so 2018 sometime, so yeah, it looks like uh, yeah, you got a lot going on. I mean, it's an RPG, right? So that's a lot, a lot going on. Explore the Neon Bathed City, Neon Bathed Quaid City. A living, breathing city with diverse population. Buy real estate and influence the city around you. Collect different and unique clothing items. Kit yourself out with an entire arsenal of hardcore hardcore weaponry. A deep, branching storyline and save the city or run it into the ground. It's your choice. That's a lot to. Uh, that's a lot of uh, stuff to do. Um, uh, I was interested in this. Like, buy real estate and influence the city around you. So, how, how does how does that work? Well, you could these. There's different ways you can get all the businesses, which is like you can buy plots of land, which are bit they're basically construction sites which are around the city. You choose whichever building out of a list that goes on that plot of land, pick the building. If you've got the money, build it, and it'll take like one building will take maybe three days, where another will take four days. Something stupid like that. It'll grow, and then once it's built, you'll get a text message on your phone in game. And you get an app, and when you press, you click on that app, and it brings up all the information of the building. You can customize the color of the lights, or like the neon lights around it will be. You can pick them from red to pink, whatever. Um, you can make your own logo. I think I posted a picture on it somewhere. Anyways, I don't think I did it on Indie Database, but I did post one on Twitter. Um, you can pick the logo, the name, all sorts like that. You can hire people, um, send them off to do missions around the city, depending on what you're doing. Because like every business has a legal business and a back end illegal business, so you can have a legal um, supply supplying weapons legally, and then at the back end you could be selling drugs. Every business has that, and then there's another way of getting businesses which is linked to the story where you'll have to fight a boss in that business and that you can either destroy it or take it over uh which is up to the player all the business management bit is completely optional but yeah that's what i can say about it without <laughs> breaking any rules Oh, okay, yeah, that sounds uh, uh, pretty pretty interesting. Uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, the Syndicate, uh, a little bit. I I I, I, uh, I didn't play too much of that game. I don't know if you ever played that one. Yeah, I did play Syndicate. Well, Jin worked on it, didn't he? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that ma that makes. That yeah, I would I would guess you would play it. Um, but yeah, it's um. That, that whole like you know the front is uh you know you have a legal front and then black market or you know a, a not so legal alternate business uh, is an interesting uh, interesting concept uh, rusty bucket i'm looking at one of the screenshots here what is the rusty bucket sell i was like <laughs> hmm <laughs> <laughs> well, i guess you can't say spoilers yeah maybe not i think um, it says below uh robot parts 
Oh, yeah, robot part. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that the small sad robot going to work there or is that something else? Um, <laughs> that would be a good idea actually. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> There you go. I want, I want, I want 2% for that idea. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, um, the combat, is it like a uh, shadow run kind of combat or what kind of, how does that work? The combats, um, you've got melee combat, which it's got like a lock on, like kind of like Witcher, but the shooting's more free for all. Like you can move, uh, whatever you can move wherever you want, fire wherever you want. You can duck behind things, push up against the wall and shoot from around there. Stuff like that. Oh, okay, okay. Um, okay, so I don't know, maybe let's talk a little bit about uh, the cyberpunk stuff. So, like, obviously everybody knows, you know, the Silver Spook story, so I don't want to regurgitate that again. Uh, but what made you start walking around the city with trench coats and the pink mohawks? What, what got you into that? Pink mohawks? Okay, maybe that. <laughs> that's what I wear around my city, so I don't know what you wear around your cyberpunk city. But what, what, what got you into cyberpunk? <laughs> I don't know, I've just always, like, took a like into it, but... I won't say there's anything in particular. Um, I, I know, like your story is quite similar to mine, but in a different part of the world. Like I was homeless for quite some time. Um, I'd been in the army um, as a combat medical technician. Um, it. I was. I was stupid at the same time because I was hanging around with people that I shouldn't have hung around with and my they decided to play with two two rifles and I was running away from them because they were shooting at me messing about and I, I went to jump over a fence and the fence was like six foot six and I'm five foot and a peanut <laughs> uh, probably, I'm five foot seven I think I was climbing the fence and as I jumped my jeans had got stuck on the like bottom this like sharp bit of the fence and I swung around and completely crushed my shoulder. Um oh, the thing is this, my shoulder saved my life because the doctor said if it had been my head I would have just snapped my neck and I wouldn't be here. Um it meant I had to change careers and everything. Um I went into a bit of a depression for a while. Uh ended up homeless for about for Probably about half a year. Um, got sorted, got back on my feet. Um, where I am now, really, it's been a journey. But yeah, I think when you're in them situations, you you think dark, anyways. And yeah, I think that's that's mainly probably how things got to they are now i i met my wife and things went better from there i've got a place to live now <laughs> um yeah i would go back to the army if i could but nah i think i think game dev's the best way for me right now <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wow, that's crazy, man. I, I didn't realize, yeah, that that uh, that you're in that situation. Uh, uh, shoot, yeah, uh, yeah. I was, the, yeah, I was like, yeah, we were kind of homeless for some time, but never uh, six months, and not in. I don't know, man. That's uh, you're in, you're in Hull, correct? Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe we could talk a little bit. I mean, I, I mean, I'm a little bit interested. Like, what was that? Like, what was that? Like that part of it like for you? I mean, because um, like in like in Hull. I mean, in, in Hawaii. I mean, the only good thing about here is. You won't like freeze to death. I mean, I mean, like, where, where, where is help? By the way, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Hold um, on, my UK. Side. The northeast of England, so it's it is cold, but it was about it was about February March time as well, and I was mainly staying in parks on the benches. Um, a bit later on, a few more, like probably a month or two into it. No, it was about two months into it. Um, a friend of mine offered me their caravan that was in the back garden and I ended up living in that for a few months as well oh I see a gar garden is like that's like your yard right or like your yeah yeah you look okay yeah <laughs> yes yeah, so, uh yeah um wow I mean how old were you when that happened um 
um, I would have been about 17, 18. Oh man. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, like, cause yeah, I probably, yeah, I really, I, I don't want to tell you it again, but I, I kind of, I was working with, you know, the kids, uh, a lot of the kids were homeless, the kids that I was, I was working with. So, I mean, I guess, I don't know if you're, if you were here, I might've ended up, you, you went to, you went to kind of, did you go to like a program or like a employment kind of um, thing or? <coughs> no, I did it. Everything on my own. I, um, it, it was, it was difficult because in England, you leave school at 15, 16. I'd left at 15 because that, that was when my birthday fall. Um, I think at 15, I'd, I'd sign up to the army with my parents, well, my mother, because I don't have parents, but my mother, we'd sign up for the army straight away. Like the second I'd left school, it was like the week after I'd signed up for the army. Um, she, she, she wasn't really about, kicked me out once all the army stuff fell through and I ended up on the streets by myself and I didn't know what to do. It was, it was only for a friend that let me into his caravan after, after I fall ill from being in the cold that it like, I started to get out from him. He was like, oh, you, you should do this, you should do that and we'll get you sorted here and there. And after a while, my, my gran, she said, she said I could stay with her for a bit and I ended up staying with her after that for quite a while. And then I moved back to my mum's, which wasn't the best thing I ever did because I ain't got the best parents in the world. But, oh, man. <laughs> wow. Um, that's crazy. Your, your mom kicked your mom kicked you out? Yeah, yeah. She made me homeless. Um, she's... Yeah, she's... I don't know if you can call her mum. I don't. Oh. Have, I don't have contact with her um, anymore. Oh geez, man! Sorry, sorry to hear that. I did not realize that. Nah, it's all right. <laughs> I'm a parent now myself. I've, I've make sure I do things differently. In it. Yeah, don't kick your little guys out, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Jesus. Uh, yeah. Um. I mean, I don't know, man. That's like, yeah, I, I, I don't want to say, I don't even want to cheapen it by saying like that's like a cyberpunk thing. But I mean, that is like, <laughs> that is a, that is a cyberpunk. I mean, that, I mean, I think, I, I mean, this is my personal feeling. Like, you know, that, that's kind of why I came to cyberpunk. You know, I'm in Hawaii. This is like kind of, you think about it, it's like the least cyberpunk place on the planet, right? It's like, you know, <laughs> tropical, bright. This is like, this is not cyberpunk. Land. It's like, that, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, it's uh, you know, bright rainbow land, not cyberpunk land, right? But it's like, uh, but I mean, it's it's more about the situation, you know. It's like, I mean. It, it, Something about it, because I mean, Starpunk, it focuses on underdogs and, you know, it's not about the guy who, you know, Star Trek is about the guy who is the general in the military who made it or like big, important people where Starpunk kind of focuses on, you know, underdogs and the, yeah. you know, sometimes criminals, sometimes they're not, they're criminals because they don't have anything else to do. Right. I mean, a lot of the kids I work with, like they were, you know, they were homeless, but you know, some of them were boosting cars, you know, knocking over 7-Eleven, you know, g gives you bikes in the alley, you know, those kind of kids. And they're not necessarily doing that because like, you know, when they're five years old, they're like, oh, when I grow up, I want to go steal bikes and knock over 7-Eleven. It's just like, I don't have anything else to do, you know, kind of like. Yeah, situation. Yeah. And, and every, you know, the other kids, the society is like, you know, a lot of them are being told like, get out of here because some of them were, you know, they're were, they were minorities, they're, you know, whatever reason they're like, they're being told like, just, just get out of here. And so, you know, they don't have a lot of opportunity. So they're gonna say well screw you i'm gonna come steal some of your stuff you know it's kind of what they're doing so anyways um yeah but that's crazy man um i i don't know what to say about that but i think that uh how, how is how is how, well here's something how's being a parent now like parenting game dev se segment how, how is that like <laughs> well <laughs> it's good it's good because they they want to be involved like my daughter, she she's always like, "Can I test Neil so? Can I run around your city? Can I can I can I steal some cars in your game?" <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> she's like, "Please, daddy." <laughs> I want to steal some. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I end up going in Unity, turning off everything that's like violent and stuff, and like, yeah, go on then. You can run around, and she's like, she's like, "Oh, but you've turned the cars off." <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, how old is your daughter? She's seven. She'll be eight um, next year now. Oh wow, yeah. So, uh, what 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 is it? Is that uh, what, is it, is there great? Is it like you know first year or second year in 
in yeah, the she's she's in year four, I think. Yeah, year four or year three. Year three. Oh, yeah, okay. Year three. She's in year three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get. Well, I guess. Uh, I don't know some kids are playing GTA at age five, so you know. Uh, but yeah, that's probably a good idea to you know maybe hold off till later. Um, how, how many do you have all together? Three. Oh, three. Okay. What's the, how old are the other ones? Uh, ten and two. Oh, I see. And I said you remember you saying that you had the little guy on your lap or something. Yeah, I, I am right now because he'd be screaming down the mic. But yeah, he he's a character as well. He he's like cars, daddy. Let's go on the cars. It's like no, mate. Daddy can't do that. <laughs> <It's> like, <"Come." laughs> um. Yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, well, that's good. Like, I was gonna say, yeah, you, you, you had him on your lap while I think I was playing Terminus Machina, the Deus Ex yeah. game. I was like, <laughs> I hope. We, I, well, good thing that the the dialogue is kind of hard to follow because I, they say some nasty or nasty, some nasty stuff happens in that. But, uh, but well, not for the most part. It's just a guy running around and um, talking to yeah, people yeah. and and. Uh, but yeah, I hope he didn't. I hope he didn't see Silver Spoon get blown up by a drone. That might have been low, <laughs> traumatizing. <laughs> But um, like I don't know, how do you balance like trying to be dad, and then also do the game dev? I think mainly I do it while they're at school and when they're in bed. But in between, if I need to do something during the day while they're about, I've got my wife looks after them, so that's the easiest part. Unless they come and sit with me, and then they'll come and sit with me, and they'll they're like, "Oh, daddy, can I see what your game looks like now?" It's like, "Yeah, you can have a look, but don't touch anything." <laughs> <laughs> my wife is from Canada. Uh, I won't say anything about that again because I always make that same joke. But basically, she, yeah, well, she's keeping them right now. Otherwise, you would have the kids running around screaming in the mic. They know what the live stream is now because they know that, like, when daddy does live stream or podcast, they know that means, like, later on they're going to get a treat, like a candy or something because they have to be quiet for in the house. <laughs> yeah, for being good. Thanks for not screwing up daddy's live stream, kids. Here, <laughs> have a Pop Tart. They're like, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna go park and you can play with some friends, you know. It's kind of um, yeah, because yeah, we're we're doing. Uh, my wife does uh, uh homeschool, so she's like she's teaching them also. So she's full time full time. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it works out really well because then I mean it's kind of good in a certain way to kind of be working from home because then you you can never get the complaint, you know. Your, your last can never call you and be like, "What are you doing? Are you at the club? What are you doing? You know, what do you when are you coming home? Are you at the pub? You know, like you know, it you're always there, so you can't. They can never accuse you of anything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, I was I was game devving in the basement. I wasn't out with anybody, so, you know. Um, and also, you, you can spend as much time as you want with the kids, which is... I mean, it's one thing, like, my parents, you know, they were... Too, you know, they're both working, like, all the time, and... I mean, they didn't spend time with us, but, you know, that's a case of a lot of uh, city parents, you know, and uh, where I'm from, they work two jobs, so... That's one reason why I quit that city and I came over here is because... Uh, I was working two jobs, and then I wasn't seeing the little guys, and... Uh, and when I did see him, I was really mad because the jobs I was doing was just really stressful and crazy. So it's kind of like, uh, I mean, that's the, that's one thing I'll tell, I'll tell if you're going to be a parent and a game dev. I mean, that's one good thing about it is when you're doing game dev, you usually, unless you're working for like EA games in the big office, right? You're not, you're going to, you're mostly going to do it from home because nowadays it's so easy to get everything you need. And you can run it, you can run this development software Unity you want on any laptop. So, I mean, that's one, what's one benefit of it? Even though, like, you may not be making millions and billions of dollars right off the bat, you know. I guess you're hoping you're going to make some money from it, but I guess it's kind of up to Keystone Games. Although they're they're pretty big, as I understand. Like, they they publish it all over the planet, and they got huge connections, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think everyone hopes to make some money, though, don't they? Like, we're not doing it just to do it as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. We need to get some out of it, even if it's even if it's just a couple of quid. Even there, it's better than nothing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, it it's a passion as well. But we need to finance the passion sometimes, and we can't just finance it with bread and butter. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Yeah, it's like uh, I mean, it's one stigma. I try to one like a stereotype that's like yeah, indie indie devs who kind of just do it for the passion, and you know, if you're doing it, you should just do it because you love it. And I think yeah, it's. You do love it, but it, you know it's like you can love something, but it's also a job and it's also work, and it, it is work. I mean, like you know, it's like when you—I don't know if I don't know about you, but when you get to that last phase where you like the polishing, getting the bugs out. I mean, you might love the game, but you know that's a lot of hours of like that's not the fun part. You know, you, you're just like 
making sure all the shading is right and make sure you know your geometry isn't broken i mean that's like sometimes it can be kind of like janitorial you know just kind of cleaning stuff up right in the game oh yeah yeah it, it, you can i don't care what anyone says no matter how much passion you got for it sometimes you can hate your own game like i love neon sword but sometimes it can piss me off i can i could have placed an entire like area and then look at it and think that's all floating about two inches off the floor but from the angle you can't tell until you've like got in and looked it's like no so then you spend like another two hours placing everything right again it's like yeah uh, it's stuff like that uh, that it can get repetitive but you do it you love it but you hate it at the same time <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely remember. I remember that in, when I was well, when I was doing the DSX modding. That's the thing that's closest to this game, and I remember that like that took yeah, spent like I don't know how long trying to just get the the sidewalk. What is this like? The sidewalk looks more like a cliff. It's like two feet, but when you walk away from it, it looks normal. But yeah, that kind of perspective stuff can be a nightmare, um, uh, especially if you're by yourself. You know, if you have like a you know architecture specialist, like a, like an actual architect with a degree in making skyscrapers and shit, like that guy knows what he's doing. But I mean. You know, you just have you're mostly eyeballing it, right? When you're, you know, yeah. you, you don't have a. So yeah, it's definitely a, it's like the thing you gotta, you gotta, you gotta love it. I mean, I think a lot of people who listen to this are a lot of them are developers, so you know, don't just get in it. You know, to I mean, uh, I mean, so I know some people do just jump in it to make a lot of money. Unfortunately, it's not the thing happen straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's like yeah, it's not gonna happen straight away. Um, you know, it, you gotta, you gotta love it. I mean, somebody asked on the Twitter, it was like, so this game dev, uh, I heard that it's very stressful and there's a lot of crunch time. There's a lot of long hours. There's a lot of um, job insecurity, and how can we make it less stressful? And I, I, you know, I just say like, you know, it's never not gonna be a lot of work. You know, there's not really a solution. The only thing you can do is just like accept that maybe you'll make it, and you're not gonna make all your money back. And you know, just accept that maybe it won't happen because statistically, you know, indie games not all of them are gonna you know do extraordinarily well. I mean, usually at least you know somebody will play it, but. You're not gonna be able to, you know, f you know, fund the next five years of your life. Your career is not, you know, your salary is not gonna be paid by the game necessarily. So, if you accept that, then it's a little bit less stressful, I think. Um, oh yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, well, you said you said you made a few games. Like, how many games have you made altogether? Um, um let me just. Uh, I made quite. I think I released about three or four. But hang on, I'll see if any are still about on the internet. I got a million prototypes though. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> there you go. Maybe we can add that some bonus special features. The, you know, P head games or old school catalog. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can have them as little arcade games inside of your game. You know, like on the side of because you said you're gonna have an arcade with arcade games in there. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna do that in uh, in Neofu. There's a there's a whole bar called the arcade where you can like go inside and you know you can play these video games. I didn't have time to go in and put like actual like video games, mini games inside. Part of the game is playing an art. You have to like beat some. You have to like beat this like cop. You have to beat like a narc cop at, at an arcade game as part one of the puzzles. Um. <laughs> I need to literally sit down and play it properly without getting distracted by work and stuff. I need to find time to play through it. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, no pressure. I, you, you got your you got your publisher to make happy, but um, but uh, but yeah, when you get a chance, you know. If, if you get stuck, I, I to be honest, like I got really stuck in a lot of adventure games. You know, it made me feel kind of dumb. Like, um, so if you get stuck, I mean, there's walkthroughs for Neo Few. There's walkthroughs. I heard that in, in in the UK that the kind of those point and click ones were bigger there than here. To be fair, I, I was never into the point and click games that much. I think, I, obviously, I played Neo Few, and I think the only other game like that I played was a game called Murder. I think it's oh, okay. Murder. Yeah, murder is it's on my list, on my Steam list. Um, when I was younger, I was more into Metal Gear Solid. Like that was the main game that I'd play constantly on the on like. I think it was the PlayStation One one, wasn't it? Metal Gear Solid. Sure. What was your first system then? If that was PlayStation One. Uh, the first system I had was an Amiga Twelve Hundred. That makes. Oh wow! That, that I'm old. <laughs> Oh yeah, Amiga 1200. Yeah. I gotta look this up. No, I think, I don't know, I might be older than you. I don't, I don't wanna, I'm, I'm 1983, so you know, I, any, I mean, in in uh, America, the any the Nintendo was bigger here. So I think uh, mine yeah. was, any NES was my first one. So, you know, 
Yeah, you're think... older than me, so that's all right. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think I got it, and then I beat Mario over the course of... I played, like, for 24 hours, and I beat um, Mario 1, which is... I was pretty tough. And I remember, like, I ran I ran into, like, my parents' bedroom. My mom was up cleaning for some reason, because she's crazy and, like, obsessive cleaner. Anyway, so she was cleaning late at night, and I ran into her bedroom, and she had all these light bulbs on the ground, because she was taking them off of the... Off of the uh, fixtures, and I ran in. I said, "Mom, I beat Mario," and then I stepped on a light bulb, Ooh. and and, and it, it cracked and it sliced right through my uh, pinky toe or one of my, my my ring toe, and I was like, "Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I beat Mario, Mom!" So I, I went I went to the hospital going, "I beat Mario," but I was like happy but screaming and in agony at the same time. So it was really funny. Um, I think the first game I ever beat was probably The Legend of Zelda on the SNES. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was really interested in that whole that area. I mean, we'll talk a little bit on the live streams about your area, but um, anything you want to say about about Hull? I mean, I'm sure nobody from Hull will be listening to this, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, don't work around some of it at night, maybe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it, it's it's shit, man. It's it, it is shit. I. Like, I don't know how many people would have seen, but have, have you ever watched um, the Devo like series? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they're all based, they're all filmed in Hull and around it, so you can imagine what it, that that the, his character is the typical people you see around the middle of the town. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> they're, so he's the actual people you see. <laughs> So yeah, what he's talking about, he's talking about this, uh, it's, I think it's David Firth's uh, fatpie.com. Uh, David Firth, who made Salad Fingers, I think he did this little series called Devil, uh, which I think was, was supposed to be kind of like, a, you know, somebody like kind of on the street, uh, you know, who <laughs> was like basically trying to get people to buy his train tickets and take people's jackets and it's kind of like the kids that I work with. It was like doing a lot of interesting substances and uh, it's kind of the stuff that I was trying to get kids to stop doing when I was the teacher. And they'd be like, no, mate, I'm not going to stop doing it. Get <laughs> like, oh, give me a jacket. Give me a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, devil. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so how, how, how accurate is devil? Would you say, is that, is that pretty close or is it, is it, is it, uh, over dramatized it's, it's like pretty much that's how it is it it's over dramatized but you do get them you do you literally do see people like that <laughs> oh okay <laughs> uh did, did, did you were you were you ever like devil no <laughs> <laughs> I, I still haven't gotten up to uh the uk uh i was gonna go there at one point because well, uh william gibson uh the cyberpunk godfather was having a big thing in 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 uh, London, and we were all gonna meet up. But then uh, uh, I couldn't afford the two thousand dollars for the plane ticket, so I went to Damn Canada man. and I went to the Canadian one instead, and met my wife. So that was a good deal, you know. Nice. You know, save save twelve hundred dollars and also get a wife. So that's nice. Uh, London's uh, not so bad. It's Lon London's like I don't know. It's it's completely different world because it's down south, and down south's completely different to up here. Like. Up here, everyone's more ah fuck off, mate. What are you fucking looking at, kind of thing. Where down south, they're more like they'll ignore you completely. <laughs> oh yeah. So how about your uh, uh, Mrs. Piad games? Uh, your oh, congratulations again. I, I told you on the chat, but congratulations on getting married this year. Yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, hope you're not uh, gone insane yet or all white hair. Are you okay? <laughs> no, getting there though. <laughs> <laughs> How how is how is uh how has that been the married part of of it? You know, it's nothing's changed. But then we've lived together for eight years anyway, so I guess okay. nothing could really change. <laughs> yeah. How how are the uh how how is the sh the shoes? Do you have enough shoes yet? Ah, uh, duh. If she buys any more, I'll murder myself. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> anybody. <laughs> Anybody, yes, everybody who watches the streams will know that Mrs. P. Head Games, uh, Jabe's wife, uh, really, really loves the shoes. Apparently, she bought an entire giant luggage, the, to uh, the height of a toddler, with them to their, you know, the honeymoon full of shoes, right? That's what you yeah. need when you go to, when you go to Greece, 
You gotta walk in through that sand, that that warm Greek tropical sand with that nice water. You wanna have high heels when you go through that sand, right? Out of tech. <laughs> she was like, "These are beach shoes. These are going out shoes. These are daytime shoes. These are nighttime shoes. These are different ballast pool shoes." It's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and there's me. These are my trainers. Are these for for the beach? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so when when uh, Neon Sword you know makes fifty million dollars, I guess you're gonna need a whole new house for all the shoes for all that money. You know? uh, yeah, I need three walking cupboards, one for her shoes, one for her clothes, and one for whatever else she wants. Handbags, most likely. Oh okay. <laughs> okay, I gotta ask you this: What is a cheeky Nando's, man? What is that? Is that a thing? <laughs> Do you know them kind of people was on about? <laughs> <laughs> That's where they go. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's where they go when they get tired of taking people's jackets <laughs> and, and, and sniffing, the, sniffing the stuff I'm not going to say because I don't want to encourage anybody, but you know, uh, <laughs> I, I, I believe that, you know, uh, if you're making an indie game, you know, I'm never going to beat Assassin's Creed and make something better than that. I'm never going to make a better Battlefield or a Star Wars game because I don't have the time, resources, or, you know, I don't have 2,000 people with like... Oh, yeah. you know decades of experience to make that level of game but what you can do as an indie is you can like make something that is like incredibly you know super personal and you can say something that you know big studios just can't because they're limited by having to make you know a billion dollars from every game and limited by you know they have to reach everybody like they have to reach you know five-year-olds and 20-year-olds from <laughs> china and you know England and the US and it has to like, everybody has to be able to play it which is why Pokemon and you know stuff like that it's like anybody can play it right so you can be 40 year old uh, guy or you can be a 5 year old girl you can be you know anything um, but for indie games you can kind of like you have much more freedom you can make a game that you know only the cyberpunk hardcore crazy point and click uh, or you know that certain segment will play and it's okay because I don't have to make a trillion you know I don't have to sell like 50 million copies of it in order to you know, keep going, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, so, like, so I always say, like, you know, that's why Neo Feud is a super personal story. It's, like, basically my experience. It's, Terminus Machina was also my experience. The next game is going to be, you know, it's going to be different, but a lot of it is going to be very personal stuff. How much of, like, your life and stuff goes into Neon Sword or or that kind of, in that kind of way? Like, I think when you're indie anyways, you, it's personal to you. Your game's personal to you anyways, no matter what. It's no matter what the story is about, there's something about you in that story. Um, I think, I think the city is basically a reflection of our personality. Like, there's mad sads, there's there's downsides, there's nice sads. Like, it's it's all like that. That's, I think the city is basically me. <laughs> it sounds mental, but I must be for making a game this big. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. Um. Yeah. I, I definitely get that. I mean, I, I have to admit, I have not played a whole ton of games recently. I mean, for probably similar reasons to you. I mean, you know, when you're a kid, you're just taking care of yourself. And, you know, so you got all this time to spend on working. And so, you know, you don't have as much time to play. I don't have as much time to play games as I would like either. So when I do make that million dollars and then I can retire to the nicer side of the volcano in Hawaii, <laughs> <laughs> as I always like to joke, uh, when I do get to that point, I'm going to just take some of that time. I'm going to take like a good year off and just play games that I've missed because I haven't played... I haven't played as many as I would have liked. Um, I didn't write too much on AAA games, so I'm gonna give them a little bit of pain today. Uh, I haven't played a good AAA. I don't know. Have you? I haven't played that many good AAA games. Um, what do you think? Uh, what do you think about the state of that big game industry? Just the entire games industry. To be honest, the the AAA industry right now is in the pan due to the loot boxes and the add-ons, whatever else like that. I, it's just stupid shit constantly. I think. It's it's men in suits that don't that don't play video games, don't play games like like we would of and have and still do now and again. Them them kind of people that that see money and think, ah, oh, the video game industry's bring brought in billions for Steam right now. Let's get a game on there and charge people for playing it over a couple of weeks. Like let's. Basically gambling, gambling constantly in games, that's what it is. And I don't agree with the loot box situation that's going on in the AAA industry. Not at all. But I think indie's the way forwards at the moment, because I don't even remember when a good AAA game came out that wasn't covered in loot boxes 
Anyways, to you. Uh, <laughs> I have to say no. And like, I mean, I don't know. EA Games said, you know, we're not doing any more single player games. Single single player games, narrative games. You know, which like like me if you'd like Neon Sword, right? These are not you know these are designed to be like story, you know, experiences that you will play through. This guy said that those are over because if you have a game, a long running multiplayer battlefield, one of those big long games, where you can just microtransaction and just you know pay the level and just keep you know get people like stuck and addicted to that game and then just keep taking basically half of their salary per month and just dumping that into the game because, you know, it, like gambling, you know, uh, which, you know, is illegal in a lot of places, probably for a good reason, right? Like certain types of substances are illegal and certain types of things are illegal because, yeah, it's like, you know, it's a free choice. Like you, you could choose to pay for that loot box or you could choose to not, right? But for people with addictive personalities, it's like if you put certain narcotics and you just threw them on the street and you said, hey, everybody, try some of these narcotics, right? Uh, uh, certain types of drugs, right, that are really addictive, you could say, well, they could have choose to not pick up that needle, right? Yeah, yeah, but, but <laughs> some, yeah, someone would. Yeah, and, and, then, and then, you know, if you threw that in front of some kids, right, and you could say, well, they could choose not to do, well, you know, well, I mean, yeah, but also, but if once you shoot up that thing, right, once you do certain types of, you know, uh, uh, addictive substances, you're addicted to it, and so you should not be able to just spread that all over the place, you know, so that's, a lot of people think of, I think of, like, loot boxes, that gambling stuff, it is a, it is an addiction, and I know people, like, I know, I just talked to uh, a guy who was like, yeah, I, I, I got divorced because I w got so addicted to these loot boxes. I was dropping, like, the paycheck, you know, my whole, all my salary for the month on, you know, thousand, you know, five hundred thousand dollars on, you know, I forget what game it was. Like, one of these, I'm not going to name names, but we know what they are, right? Where you just, you, you just like one dollar every time, right? But over, oh, if you, yeah. you do that 20, 30, 40 times a day, times over a month, that's thousands, you know, it's hundreds of thousands or a thousand dollars. And so this guy got divorced and like, yeah, <laughs> I think he might've been homeless for a little while because he couldn't pay rent because he was so addicted to these loot boxes. So, you know, I do, I do think it is like, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it is kind of like digital heroin in a certain sense, you know? Um, and so that, 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 that part of it is, is, I mean, that part of it is just crazy, but at the same time, Steam has, I mean, as we said, Steam has a monopoly, right? I mean, I don't know about you, but do you, the guy said GOG gets like 5%, good old games get 5% and Steam has like, basically the whole pc market and um so you can't really compete and so it's i don't know it's just kind of an unfortunate situation i mean so i do think anyway long story short uh the the indies i think is the way forward because of that um and um and, and i don't think that single player games are dead because you know for them they're dead right but i think but for most people i don't think people are gonna stop you know like people don't stop watching movies what is a movie a movie is a narrative single oh, yeah. experience you know, you're not going to a movie and like, you know, it's not like a multiplayer experience when you're in a movie, but people still watch them, right? So I don't know. What, what do you think about that you, that single player games are dead thing? Uh, I don't know. Or anything nah, I just said. I, I, <laughs> I really don't believe single player games are dead. I mean, how many times have they sold Skyrim on different, Skyrim on different like consoles and whatever else it's on now? I mean, there's currently on Skyrim right now, there's 19,000 people online on Steam. Like, I was that dead? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Point QED. That's 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 it right there, right? Um, um, yeah. So like, yeah. I think that the single player games uh, are you know still going. Even if they were dead, I'm not gonna you know stop uh, making this kind of stuff because I mean you know multiplayer is you know okay, but that, that's the one place that it's lacking, right? I mean, you know what what is the story of? I mean, I like I know Overwatch and these kind of games they have background stories, but in the game the story is I ran around and we shot each other. And you know, there isn't, you know, I mean, so it's, 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 it's yeah, it's competitive. It's like, you know, it's like, it's like, what is the story of soccer, right? Yeah, it's not really a story, right? It's just like we ran around that we kicked the ball around and we kicked it in the go, and the other guy had butted me, and uh, and then I got a penalty at the end, you know, like it's like it's uh, you know, it's a different thing, right? It's a different thing, so um, but yeah, definitely not... is with multiplayer at the moment is <laughs> like, say, a battlefield, whatever, I can't get into them at the moment because. They, they demand constant time, and if you ain't got that time, they're like, oh, buy a loot box and we'll give you a few weapons that'll fight, that'll help you. It's like, no, nah, that just, it's it's a spiral. You If you ain't got time, then you've got money to put into it. That's what they see it as. Yeah, yeah as we mentioned, right, if you're a young person, if you're, you know, if you're in, in school, you might have a lot of time. Uh, but yeah, but if you're not, if you're like, you know, me or you, we were working all the time. Oh, I'll just put some money in because I don't have, I don't have six hours. I, you know, I got to go dev this game i gotta go drop my kid off at the practice and then i gotta go you know do my taxes so here's you know ten dollars give me a darth vader level character you know in my stuff you know. yeah. 
I know. I think Star Wars has took taken that out, but uh, I, there's a lot of games that still have it. So, you know, it is like a, it is it is kind of taking advantage of people who have some money but not a lot of time. And so, yeah, that that totally sucks. Uh, <laughs> here's one more difficulty that, and I, I don't know, I already talked about this, but six thousand games came out right this year on Steam. Unfortunately, I mean, it's a lot of games. Um, and apparently, you get sixty minutes, right? Sixty minutes, one hour on the on the Steam front page, and then your game's off. So that's like all the time that you get and based on the number of click-throughs um that's how it's decided um and like steam will, will 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 market or not market your game based on you know the number of people click through and i, I mean unfortunately like this is not so good thing that's happening is you know a lot of people just put up a fake game or put up a lot of games with nice screenshots but then yeah. there's no game there yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't have you run into that kind of stuff where it's just like lots of spamming games and then you know people don't ask not everybody asks for a refund so even if you sell like 2,000 games and everybody found it, oh my God, this is just like a screenshot. There's no game there. It's just a ripoff. Uh, uh, if, it's a, if it's a $5 game, a lot of people, statistically, not a lot of people are not going to ask for a refund. And even if you review bomb them, right, it's kind of like the next game comes out. And then, you know, I don't know if you, yeah. if you encounter that. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen it happen. But this is why with Neon Sword, I started um, marketing it. I guess it's marketing. Marketing it early, like putting it on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. It's, it was on all them things as, as soon as I was like, I sat down, I was like, right, I'm dedicated to this game. I'm going to finish it. As soon as I'd thought like that, I I got it onto all them. So people could go through the progress with me. Like, I think if you go on Instagram, you can go all the way back to the very first screenshots where it's like five buildings in the entire city. But yeah, it is, it's good to have like a, you know, at least have some of the updates. I mean, cause I, it is one thing that people are saying, and I talked a lot, every indie developer is like, yeah, don't rely on Steam. So anybody who's making a game, uh, don't rely on Steam. Getting on Steam is not going to guarantee you any kind of sale numbers or success. So, uh, it used to where, you know, as we said, yeah. getting on Steam yeah. used to guarantee you like, you know, tens of thousands probably, but nowadays you got to market it yourself or with the publisher, you got to have the audience already there before you get there. So do share it you know and um one, one thing you can do is you can come on a silver spook podcast and i'll help you know share that <clears throat> with everybody because that's part of my goal is with this podcast you know spread the word with other indies and connect up audiences for people who are doing something <clears throat> um you know that are passionate about it that you know are doing something i mean it doesn't have to be cyberpunk and i use that term very loosely i don't mean like it doesn't have to like it doesn't have to have pink mohawks and a guy in a trench coat and somebody who sounds like harrison ford it, is, it doesn't have to look like blade runner or have Keanu Reeves in it for it to be cyberpunk. These people say, well, what are you doing? Like, you know, you're getting, don't just get mad at the AAA games industry for all these loot boxes and all of this uh, crappy games. Why don't you just do something? Well, I mean, what I'm doing is, you know, I'm, I'm trying to promote these other people so that there will, you know, it won't just be like a total monopoly of not so good stuff and, you know, acid flips and then AAA ripoffs. I mean, um, so uh, yeah, if you, if you are listening to this, think about jumping on the Source Food podcast one day. Um, just you know, send me a message on the, on the Twitter, or I got all kind of accounts all over the place. I don't have Instagram. Was it in anime palm? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't do uh, I don't do I don't do the porn games. Uh, if you got one of those, you can probably like I don't know. There's a lot of outlets for you. Let's put that that way. <laughs> one of them starts with a porn and it ends with a hub. Let's put it that way. Put it over there. Okay, here's something. Uh, are you currently working with Warwick Davis, or is that uh, not happening? <laughs> he's he's working with. The same publisher as me, but he ain't working with me. Although I could probably use him. <laughs> right? Yeah, I would say. Um, let's. Uh, if you ever, I, I joked. I said, uh, if you ever get Harrison Ford or one of those guys, you know, uh, just let him come on your Skype, and then you know, I'm gonna trick him into doing some lines for my next game. You know, I'm just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, can you read this for me? I don't know what this says, Harrison. Can you read this for me? <laughs> it's been like, can we say anything about Jane, or is that not something? Uh, yeah, we could say what you want. Let's oh, okay, Jane, uh, the head of uh, Keystone, well, the CTO, I think, is uh, made, well, as you mentioned, worked on uh, Dark Seed, which I played, and and, and the Alien vs. Predator games, um, uh, and what was that one you mentioned? 007, yeah, so, um, so that, I mean, the Keystone games, one of the, one of the head guys is a long-time veteran of the game industry, so... Um, yeah, and like uh, uh, I actually I had the oppor- I had the lucky opportunity to I talked to him a little bit um, early on, and uh, at least he, he seemed to like I mean, he seemed to at least take a look at Neofeud because I, I Dark Seed, which is the one of the games that was kind of some inspiration behind Neofeud. 
another point and click adventure made by uh, Jane Whitaker um, was uh, you know it had the well, it had H R Geiger's the aliens the guy who did the uh, the art design for Alien and Aliens uh, uh, had a lot of his work inside of this Dark Seed game. So a lot of that, like, a lot of Nefeud has some. Some people said it was kind of scary. And some of it, you know, it's a lot of, like, very, like, detailed, um, kind of uh, very intricate uh, Geiger-like artwork uh, in Nefeud. Well, a lot of that was inspired by that that part of it. Well, a lot of it came from Dark Seed, which is, uh, you've seen some of it, right? You've seen some Dark Seed? Yeah, yeah, I've seen bits and bobs of it. But it's kind of like Alien, but, like, in the suburbs, the guy has, like, he has like HR Geiger artwork nightmares. So you got like the crazy alien baby, and you got the, you know, xenomorph things. With it's a it's a pretty trippy game. You know, it's like you do that game, and you're like, am I doing acid or did that, did that just happen? I'm like, am I, am I tripping something? But yeah, it was a great it was a great horror. But yeah, uh, have you have you got to talk to Jaden at all or uh, do anything work with him? Um, I speak to Jane quite a lot actually, because obviously he's the main person, apart from like everybody in between. <laughs> But yeah, I've had some long chats with him. He's actually from the same place as me, so he's actually from Hull, so Oh he is? Yeah. <laughs> his his dad actually lives like literally round the corner from where I live. Oh wow. Oh okay. So yeah. So you can go talk to Jay Whitaker's dad anytime you want, huh? <laughs> yeah. You tell him you can go tell his dad, hey, can you tell Jane to uh make sure my game comes out on the front page of Keystone? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's... hostage. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the game out. <laughs> yeah, <who> was... <laughs> Did you get to the part with the robot kid in the feud? Uh, no, not yet. Oh, okay. But because I've, I've seen you do it and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did an entire thing where I like play that robot dude. Though, I mean, I mean, like you know, I mean, a lot of that stuff is you know, I, 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 I like to pick up on the. St- the, what do you call it? colloquialism is the fancy word but basically the, the, the slang and the sayings of places and then um that kid is basically the city where i'm from they sound a lot like la because they just i don't know for whatever reason it like it just come it just came over so they talk like how people in the you know the poor part of la talk and then i got people you know uh you know like i know some south african folks you know they have their own you know you know the word right you know yeah yeah yeah, so you know, like all that stuff. So I and then you have, you know, there's some some of the London and UK slang. That, that character, the proto proto J, has a lot of a mixture of all of that. His idea is kind of like he's in a future city in which you know it's kind of like everything's kind of blend. It's a very cyberpunk where everything kind of blended together in the same way that Blade Runner has like all this the Japanese eating in the noodle market, right? And you yeah. and and the uh, what's like the uh, uh, James Edward almost the the cop who makes the origami, right? He has his own. It's like a Japanese cross with Mexican cross with LA slang. It's just totally new language, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I, I was I'm always kind of interested by that stuff. So because you know the, the kids I was working with, they don't they didn't talk. You know, and the kids, my friends when I was growing up, you know, they didn't talk proper English. You know, <laughs> they I, I can I can't even say like there's a there's a language in Hawaii called Pidgin English, which is basically it's like Filipino, Japanese, uh, Chinese. Hawaiian, it's a plantation, you know, because everybody was working in the, what do you call it, sugar plantation. So they made this whole new language and it sounds really strange. Like, I don't know. What's, what was your favorite cyberpunk movie, maybe? Blade Runner. <laughs> Blade Runner. Okay. <laughs> well, all right. That, I think we're like 10 for 10. Everybody loves Blade Runner. So Blade Runner gets the, you know, the neon, the neon star award for best cyberpunk movie of all time. Because everybody has said Blade Runner. Like, nobody has not said Blade Runner. I don't know if it's, and nobody wants to piss me off, but, um. Uh, but yeah, okay, instead of talking about Blade Runner, because we already talked about that, like, every single podcast, what's the best one this year, then, for you? Oh, well, I think uh, it's kind of kind of <laughs> obvious, right? Or not? I can say, it, if you want. Oh, oh it's some, okay, 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 well, what is it, then? Is it going to be something surprising? No. <laughs> okay, what, what is it, then? Blade Runner. Okay, so I think, really, Scott, you're going to have, he owes me some money, because I'm giving him so much free marketing right now, man. He's going to be... Right. It's got well, the what? Matrix as well. Okay, okay, yeah. What's yeah? Is that your second? What's your second favorite? What's your second favorite? Uh, yeah, the Matrix. Matrix. Okay, okay. Uh, what what did you like about the Matrix? Oh, I, I don't know. What's your favorite thing about the Matrix? I think if you if you actually watch it and understand it, it's a lot deeper than what people see on the surface. I, well, when it came out, it kind of blew a lot of minds. I think. Yeah. What what, what did you think about it when you first saw it? When did you see it? I seen it when it first came out. I was, I don't know. I think it seemed amazing because 
the effects and stuff was something you'd not really seen before like that, and it it proper blew my mind. <laughs> right, I remember yeah, yeah. thinking, "What this this is this is the best and all that." And then after the third one came out, they made an online game, and I, I played that for years after as well. <laughs> oh, really? The yeah. Matrix Online? Yeah. I I never got to playing that, but I remember I think I was about to play it, but I didn't have the time really. But uh, so was that some influence on Neon Sword by any chance? <laughs> um, do you know what? If if you look at Neon Sword, there's telephone booths in Neon Sword, and the telephone booths are based on the telephone booths in The Matrix Online, so they look similar to them. But oh, okay. that's my call out to them because I actually speak to some of the people that worked on the game, so I know them personally as well. Oh, really? The Matrix yeah. Online? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I want to talk to them on the Source from Podcast, okay? <laughs> uh, if I, actually, that's the next thing, you know, because I already got, I got, you know, all the point and click guys, you know, I got, I got to get the guy who made Deus Ex, and then I got to get, Keanu, you know, Keanu Reeves is actually Hawaiian, right? He's actually, his dad is from Jane Hawaii. Knows him. Huh? Jen knows him. Oh, okay, there we go. All right, so I want to get... Go. I need Keanu Reese on the Source Spook podcast, okay, bro? Because like you know, went from one Hawaiian to another, man. Uh, you gotta help. You gotta help me out. You gotta help a cyberpunk, a Hawaii. It's just weird because there's a lot of Hawaiians. I noticed there's a lot of Hawaiians who are in cyberpunk stuff, like Keanu Reeves and uh, uh, was it Jason? Mom Jason Momoa was just in a uh, the Bad Batch, which is like a, it's post-apocalyptic, which is pretty close to cyberpunk, and he's in a lot of sci-fi. So I want to do one with Jason Momoa, you know, Carl Drogo uh, and Keanu Reeves uh, dressed up. As Neo from the Matrix with the trench coat and the shades, and me, I'm gonna have my 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 shades that I always wear. That I'm not, I'm wearing them just because I need. It. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, <laughs> and I'm gonna have Keanu Reeves like in the video podcast, and we're both gonna have the same shades on, and it's gonna be like the best thing ever. And then you can, James, you can drop in and ask him the question you always want to ask him, which is what I don't know. <laughs> Are you my father? <laughs> <laughs> Spiritually, maybe it's kind of like you know, yeah. the, the father figure. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. I, I I I should say I did like um, I did I just watched Johnny Mnemonic last night. So you seen that Johnny Mnemonic? No. Oh, okay, okay. I, I would recommend taking the. It's worth a look. You know, it's it's got some bad ratings, but uh, it's actually you know, like Blade Runner. It was misunderstood and not you know well received in its time. So. I would check. I would take it. Out. It's it's pretty cyberpunk. It's like it's got the worst part of New Jersey on it, which is like probably you're probably gonna identify with some of the characters in it. There's a lot of homeless folks. Situation similar to you know your situation. Um, like it it has the punk side of it. I, I don't want to try to say this in the right way. It has the punk side of it. It's not just yeah, all yeah. flashy lights. You know, I think a lot of the cyberpunk nowadays. I don't, I don't know what you think about it, but there's a lot of cyberpunk stuff that kind of calls itself cyberpunk, but it's more you know it's mostly just. I don't want to rag on the anime, the cartoons, but a lot of it is just kind of the, you know, the fun, flashy stuff, but not the punk yeah. stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, that's what, that's what New Feud's got, you know, it's got grimy, it's got dirty, you know, it's got like, you know, it's got the guy in the alley, in the dark alley, you know, uh, it's, got, it's got the, you know, the drug dealers, it's got the, you know, or, you know, the people who unfortunately have to do stuff they don't want to do, uh, because that's what they got to do. And, you know, that's, that's where punk, I mean, to me, that's where punk came from. You know, it's like punk is not flying, you know, being in some fancy, you know, cyber thing in a fancy building and uh, having some cool technology, you know, like having some techno glasses and, you know, drinking some fancy coffee, you know, that's not punk to me. I mean, punk, like punk, punk came from the street, right? I mean, I don't know what you think about that. Oh yeah, um, exactly. If you, if you, there's a video of Neon Sword and if you look, watch it, it's just me running around the city, but you'll see like the city goes from nice areas to shitty areas to nice areas because i want that punk side in there as well that makes it dark you don't want all these bright lights everywhere constantly like there's literally the worst parts of quid city which is obviously a, a reference um right. it's got proper shitty parts like you'll walk you can walk around them on the inside and you'll be like you're like fucking hell this is a bad area <laughs> yeah just by looking at it but you also can influence some areas with your businesses that you run can change how that area looks as well i don't know if i mentioned that before to you 
Oh, uh, I didn't know that. That sounds that sounds pretty interesting. So like, for, well, like what would be like? So for example, if you ran a business, uh, what was something that you could do that would impact what the area? Like, what, what would be like an example of that? So if you ran um, drugs from the back of a building, the back of your business, that area will like things in that area will start like closing down, and you'll see more homeless people. There'll be more like like sh shacks outside and stuff like that because people have lost their jobs because they're addicted to the drugs that are in the like in that area now the what oh yeah keep going um yeah basically that's it you see the crime will rise in that area because the more people are addicted to what you're getting getting out there oh wow that's like yeah that's like that's 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 pretty cool man to me that, like that's the kind of stuff that like, interests me you know uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like you know how like you know how your decisions and like how things that you know people do impact the you know how it actually affects the 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 world the spin mortality guy i talked to also he's making a big cyberpunk strategy game right where it's it's kind of i don't know if you heard anything about that but spin mortality is uh, it's currently just got it got funded so good job um, i'm following that on twitter actually I, you just reminded me <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, Jamie uh, Patton, who's uh, also from the UK, but now in Austria, um, but is uh, Spin Mortality is another cyberpunk strategy game where you basically you play like the evil, uh, where well, you play the big mega corporation that you know develops horrible products that kill people and then spins <laughs> cultures that make people think that it's great and then sells it to them and uh, by governments to subvert democracies, uh, you know, uh, uh, start wars, start uh, chaos uh you know assassinate people that don't want to put the policies that you want through uh there's like you know it's basically you play like the you play like the equivalent of the Terrell corporation or worse or wallace corporation in blade runner 2049 in in um in this game but it's from a it's from a big you know from like a from like a like a global you know wide angle lens like aerial view of the world uh so, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's kind of like it seems, it seems like there's a little bit of crossover between that and this, but where this one is got you got this one's kind of like a much more what do you call first person like in your face kind of perspective where you actually see the like in that game I think as I understand it it's mostly uh, you know strategy and you can see numbers and there's a little bit of graphics but not a whole lot whereas right. it seems like this one you, you actually see you might actually meet some characters right so if you start pushing those drugs maybe I don't know what I don't want to put more words in your mouth but you know you might you know you actually see the characters or the areas and people on the street and you know getting you see the actual physical real life uh effects of you know the things that you're doing right yeah yeah so what, what happens if you go up and talk to the guy is the guy gonna the, the guy who used to have a job and now he's homeless what is he gonna say to you <laughs> <laughs> it depends because there's that much there's so much different dialogue that can happen between different people that it's not exactly predictable what you could get oh, so how how, are, how is it how does it work like are you writing all that dialogue or how does that work Oh yeah, it's all it's all written. Um, it it goes by how people see you, what you, what different skills you've got, how how you've affect, affected a certain area, so how people will react to you. Oh okay, I see. Um, uh, yeah, I think yeah that, that part yeah I I, now I yeah now I really want to play this game on the. On the one of the streams, or one, maybe I'll just do a a, a a whole podcast. It's just Neon Sword or something, um, but a video one. So, because yeah, that, that part. This is something that happens in near food that uh, a segment of the population, like the humans, there's humans. Then there's like the pure, well, like the 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 super wealthy humans, kind of like in Altered Carbon, where you can transplant, Im stay immortal by transplanting your your mind into other bodies. That kind of this kind of those the 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 kings, the literal masters of the universe, that super rich. And then there's like you know kind of humans and then there's cyborg and then there's like the robots and the half human half animal experiments that the rich uh they're like the failed experiments while the rich are trying to create better bodies for themselves and they just dump them into the trash pile into the the areas that are the equivalent of hull and near feud and uh <laughs> they go yeah go ahead figure out how to live when you got you know cancer coming out of your artificial cancer coming out of your legs and your your batteries are dying in your arms and your, your cybernetic arm is rusting and broken so figure out how to live. I don't really give a crap. There's no social safety net. Go f yourself. That's basically what they're saying. And so there's these characters, right? And the robots who kind of like create these gangs, like the Chrome Boys, and there's like the Robo Ballers, and there's like all these. Um, and, and one of the main characters is a member of the gangs, um, who like you know basically they're selling drugs, they're pushing drugs, and you know, you know, and a lot of it is like you know it's like uh, 
uh, the main character is supposed to get kids off of drugs, right? He's like he's like a social worker, right? Like that's, that was my job before. He's like trying to get kids off of drugs, um, and uh, you know, and a lot of the responses like you know, well, what the hell, you know, the kids, the, the one, you know, I, I don't want to name names, but he's the one who goes like, you know, what the hell are I gonna do, you know? It, like you know, so what you want? What you want me to go back to school? What you think you is, Mr. T? I don't do drugs. Stay in school, little Johnny, bitch. I tried to straighten out going to school, boo shit. Now school's a fucking myth lab, and last time I went, I got beat to blue screen by a couple of species of cops, you know, and so like, you know, he's giving a blip, you know, um, like you're basically saying, hey, you want me to go to school? There is no school, it's a drug lab, right? You know, and um, and, and that's all I can do, because nobody wants to hire robots, they only want to hire people, and so, you know, and so, you know, like, I mean, I don't know, that's that's kind of my, this, like, this is based on stuff that I heard, like, I had kids come, Mr. Chris, or like, you know, Mr., you know, when I was teaching them, Try to get them to get off the drugs. They're going, what? What do you mean you go to school? There is no school. I go to school. The, the teachers just, they don't even teach anything. They just, I show up and they, they're not, they're like on their phone the whole time. And then, and then, you know, I get out of school and then there's these guys going, hey, you can make a lot of money selling drugs. And then, you know, I, I didn't even know what to, you know, I mean, to be honest, I didn't even know what to say a lot of time. I'd be like, shit, kid. I mean, I don't know, man. This, I, 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 I honestly, I, sometimes I didn't really know what to say because it was kind of like, you are kind of in a, you, you don't, you don't have, you don't have any good choice, right? I mean, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you. I don't know if you ever been in that position or you know anybody that's had that. But I mean, that's something like that experience is something that you don't get in a lot of the new cyberpunk, even in, in Blade Runner. And in, 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 it's great, but so, I think like that kind of stuff is like that is like really that. I mean, a lot of the stuff is like really where the punk stuff comes in. And and uh, I would like. I, I, that's why I like. I like that idea that you just brought up in Neon Sword. And uh, I hope that more games do that. But I, I don't know if you want to comment on that. But um, is I that think, is that yeah? I but, think it's harder for big publishers and the film industry to do things like that nowadays because they've got they've got to walk on eggshells around a lot of people as well where we don't have to yeah exactly <laughs> exactly yeah i just you know i just you know i'm like um this actually got me in trouble before i should say you know so like i've actually said st stuff in there but like you know you can't say that about us we're rich important people you know and they're like you know it actually cost me a job once um but you know i was like you know what well you know, go fuck yourself, motherfucker. Like, cause uh, that's my experience, bitch. And your rich, important shit is fucking me over. So, and then they basically said, "Well, you're fired." And I was like, "Well, fuck you." So, uh, so I, I will say, you know, like that's <laughs> it. Like literally, yeah. It it uh, it sucks, you know. But I also, I was like, you know, I like I'm not gonna, you know. At, at the end of the day, like you know, you can't, you know. It's 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 worth it to me to kind of like say what is actually going on. Rather than just kind of like, you know, you know, I mean, every job you got to do a certain amount. You got to hold your tongue, right? In any job, you're going to have to, you know, even getting on Steam, you can't say certain things, right? You can't say certain things, but there's certain things that like, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I don't know what you, but I'm not going to like make it nice, nice, you know, I'm not going to just make it into like a happy anime game where we just date robots and not that it's dating is bad, but you know, and everything's just happy, hunky dory and, you know, in the game just because somebody wants it to be that way, because that's not. That's not how it is, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but yeah, so, yeah. So leave the leave that leave that idea in. Well, you know, Keystone Games. I mean, how how have they been about that? Have they been like, oh, you got to tone this down, man, or have they been kind of like, yeah, just do what you want? Yeah, no, yeah, they've they've basically said, no, it's your game, your idea, go with it, run with it. If if it works, then do it. So I've been going along and just going with it. But <laughs> yeah, they. Because what I was worried about was that they'd try and censor me with obviously being a charity for kids and stuff. But they've said to me, I've shown them a lot worse stuff that's in Neon Sword and they've said, they've said yeah, that's fine. And I've been like, great. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I, I guess it's like, you know, I mean, this is going to have a rating. So it's like, like young kids are obviously not going to oh, necessarily no. be playing it, right? But you know but it's fine because you know the money from the game is going to go to help the kids but the game itself you know is you know it's going to have going to be played by older folks obviously right yeah I, I don't the story anyways is like it's it's quite out there I, I don't think kids would understand it anyways it's like they'd be too young for it the way it is at the moment right 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 yeah so you know i mean same thing for near feet i mean like you know i mean you know, I mean, it's not like it's a difficult game for a lot of reasons, and you know, one of them is like there's some hard scenes in it, 
Um, some people have even said like they had to kind of stop playing for a little bit because it's not not because like it was hard to like you know they got stuck, uh, but because they you know there's some scenes that are like they're 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 just like difficult to watch because of the stuff that's happening in like the kind of stuff that we're talking about right is you know like I mean you you've seen this kind of stuff it's like it can get really ugly right in the in the in the street and so so I wouldn't you know I wouldn't want like I wouldn't like if I, if my kids were to actually play that game like they would if they could understand it they might actually be traumatized so I wouldn't want them to play it. Um, but maybe you know when you, when you're in high school, probably you can handle it. The the ultimate thing, right? The final thing, like the message of it, I think it seems like, I mean, I, cyberpunk generally, right, is kind of the message is like you know let's not do this. And, I mean, I guess the point of it is not like let's live in a world where there's just like horrible massive corporations and everybody else is just poor. The point of it is kind of like let's not make the world more like that. I mean, I don't know what you think. I mean, you have kids now, right? So yeah, yeah. I'd what, what do you not be in that kind of world? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, you know, if you've actually been homeless, I mean, like, that ain't, that's not so cool, right? I mean, like, what? Oh, yeah, it's not cool. None. The, I really, the idea of cyberpunk as a genre is nice and cool, but the actual reality of it is, that's not good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, it's, I mean, that's why I think of it as, like, you know, it's, uh, you want, I mean, unlike, you know, there's other genres or, like, you know, utopia, you know, like, Star Trek is more, like, we should probably move more like Star Trek, where you can just go to any machine and everybody's got all the food and all the, you know, nobody works in Star, I mean, for the most part, it's kind of like machines print up all the food you want and nobody's hungry, nobody's, you know, nobody's homeless since, I haven't seen anybody homeless in Star Trek, I mean, right? I mean, <laughs> unless, they, unless they go to a backwards planet at Cyberpunk, right? Like, yeah. Both things have their merit. I mean, it's good to make some stuff that, you know, happy or you know not 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 as dark stuff but um but i i, I tried to like kind of make some like kind of like ha like sunnier happier space opera kind of star trek -ish stuff and it, like i don't know i just i couldn't do it you know i just tried and i was like you know, like i don't know what that world would be like you know it's kind of like i only kind of know my experiences like you know like I'm, I'm sure like if you tried to make like something that was really happy you know you'd have art I, I don't know have you tried to make any of that kind of games i mean if you made like a puzzle game it's different but uh i don't think to be honest, an happy, cheerful game won't really suit my style anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, I don't think I'd be able to not not by myself. Yeah. Oh here, I have to ask you this before before we go. Uh so so your sister. Uh, uh Which one? <laughs> how many sisters do you have? How's that? How many brothers and sisters? Uh um on my mom's side, I've got four sisters. Um, on my dad's side, I think I've got six sisters and three brothers. I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, yeah. So, how's the how's the Thanksgiving and Christmas? If, if they all got together, you did a big room for that, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I need a real big room. <laughs> so, uh, do they do? Is this is cyber goth still a thing over there? Or is that not? Uh, I don't. Uh... In Hull, um, cyber goth probably not. You do see a lot of goths now and then, but I don't know. Um, my family is more bikers, so it's more like leather jackets, small t-shirts, and jeans. <laughs> kind of oh, thing. I see. Is your is your well? Your wife obviously has some other fashion ideas, yeah, right? She's she's like the typical girly girl kind of fashion kind of shit oh okay my, my wife she does like fashion she, she, she she's she's kind of more on the punk she, uh, yeah yeah I, I would say she's more of the t-shirts and jeans and and that kind of end of the spectrum although she does do a lot of different interesting makeups and stuff like that oh she did do the makeup for proto the one the one thing where i, I dressed up as one of the near few characters oh she yeah did, that, that was good that <laughs> yeah yeah so all that makeup she did that was she did all that so that took some time man I, that, it's I, I played the Terminator one year too. That was one of my Halloween costumes, and she did all the makeup. You know the whole with the whole face coming off, like the red eye, and yeah, the skin yeah. and the metal and all that stuff. Everyone loves Terminator, don't they? Oh yeah, they better. <laughs> Otherwise, someone's just gonna come over there and tell you what's what. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, James Cameron. Oh, James Cameron's putting out Battle Angel Alita. I don't know if you saw that. Nah, I didn't see much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not out yet, but he's uh, there's a trailer was released for this. Cause you know Ghost in the Shell, yeah, uh, yeah. So James Cameron is gonna do Battle. It's like, a, it's like it's another anime that was like Ghost in the Shell called Battle Angel Alita, uh, and then oh, also Altered Carbon just dropped. I, I don't know. Did you see that trailer? The Altered Carbon one. Man, I haven't seen no trailers. I don't see TV, do I? 
Oh, <laughs> uh, it's on the internet. That's why I saw it. I saw it on my Twitter feed somewhere. Somebody sh- showed it up. Um, but Alter Carbon is more time on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, or I, oh, you know, I'm in the I'm in the the Cyberpunk Facebook groups. That's also where I find some of this stuff. Oh, actually, uh, I'm in some of them, but again, I don't really spend time on Facebook. If it's up, it's up because I'm trying to someone. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That's probably smart because I waste a lot of time there. So probably you should probably stick to that. Um, <laughs> But it is good to get. I mean, I got the Altered Carbon is a book, but it's another cyberpunk book that was written in like uh, two thousand. I just. You're... I don't know what you mean. You you, you heard just... of that? Yeah, the Netflix show, isn't it? It's gonna be on Netflix. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna be on Netflix. So, um, yeah, there's that. Oh, there's a there's a bunch of cyberpunk. I think next year is gonna be the year. Uh, I mean, Blade Runner twenty forty nine already came out, but there's a bunch of there's like like Netflix, Amazon. Um, all these James Cameron, all these big studios and names are are, are, are trying to jump on the cyberpunk thing now. Um, yeah. So I mean, it should be. I mean, it should be like good for next year. I mean, maybe we'll have some other. I won't have to talk about Blade Runner every single podcast because there'll be some other shows. Maybe I don't know. Uh, I don't wash it down. Uh, yeah, right. Well, yeah, okay. Here, how about that? What, 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 what would, what would be, what, what do you, what do you hope they don't do? Uh, PA Games. Wash it down. <laughs> yeah, um... <laughs> I want them to be more, more like the eighties kind of cyberpunk, where it show show you the gore and whatever else it needed to show you, like show you the downside of life. Not like I don't know, not all this utopia shit that they've started showing in films that are apparently a cyberpunk as well. Um, I don't know. I just yeah, don't well, want them to fuck up the genre. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, man. You say you say it as clear as possible. Uh, like, you know, thankfully, like Blade Runner twenty forty nine. I, I mean, they could have really screwed that up. I think. Oh yeah, that could have gone so bad. <laughs> yeah, I was watching some of the trailers. I was like, oh my god, this is just gonna be you know Harrison Ford and Ryan Gosling jumping around with a couple explosions and that's it. I mean, I don't know. First trailer kind of scared me, but like, thing is, you get an hour and a half without Harrison Ford, and then all of a sudden he's in it for for ten minutes, and then he's out, and then he's back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, but thankfully, yeah, that wasn't as bad as it could have been. Um, yeah, probably gonna have, have you to. Seen Electric Dreams yet? Electric Dreams? Uh, no. What? Where is that on? Where's that? Um, on? I'm not sure what it's on on in America, but it's been shown here. Um, just Google it. It's Philip K's um, Electric Dreams. Philip K. Dick's Electric Dreams. Oh, okay, it... I have not seen that. I have to check it out. Um, I've not seen that. Oh, have you seen the Black Mirror by any chance? No, is it good? The Black Mirror is a, is a TV show. I think it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a, uh, it's a UK made show, and it yeah it's it is uh it's 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 like dystopian and not necessarily there's a lot of cyberpunk stuff in it, but it is super ble- I mean, if you like dark stuff, it is really dark. Like some of them are depressing, and um, I had to stop watching actually after about two two or three episodes um, for a little while because it was just like you can't you can't watch more than one. It's just like super. It's kind of like you know. What would happen if like certain technologies keep going? Like you know, like uh, the um, what do you call? It? There's one where the bees die, and so they have these robot bees that repollinate. They use to pollinate plants, and somebody <laughs> ends up using these bee drones to like, sh- like they, they they hack the drones and they make them bury in, burrow into people's heads and kill them <laughs> with the bee drones. And they're everywhere, right? You, you can't get rid of them because there's no bees left. And so these so people are like randomly getting killed by this bee drone, um, and some scary stuff in it um and it's like it's like it's it's scary because it's like it's close it's like it could happen tomorrow kind of yeah, stuff literally. like you know because they already have these little drones right and um yeah. you know there's like one where they like the the military like puts like fake things on your eyeball it's like it, it it like it's like in order to get people to kill each other they the like your google glass but like a like a contact version of it it, it broadcasts like uh it makes people look like zombies and monsters and then you, you think you're killing zombies and monsters in real life but you're actually killing people so it's like uh, some really creepy stuff I got. So it's um, <laughs> yeah, really dark. So you know, you, you 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 like come to like I don't know some poor area of the world, and you think you're killing zombies, you think you're killing monsters, but you're actually just killing everyone in the village. So yeah, it's pretty dark stuff. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah. So huh? That'd be one way to deal to deal with like PTSD with soldiers, though, wouldn't it? You'd be able to just make them think they're killing monsters, and they could be out there just killing an entire village of people. <laughs> that's pretty much what it is like you know because the military well i don't want to give away the whole plot but it's kind of like you know because people you know that's one of the things right is ptsd and 
the you know people's reaction they don't want to they they won't even shoot certain things if they say i need you to shoot that unarmed uh group of people a lot of soldiers won't do it and so this is like the way where the way around it is yeah, yeah. just make it and then you can't take it out it's like it's like implanted in your face so you can't even take it out so it's like i'll have to look, give it a watch <laughs> yeah that one is pretty pretty scary stuff man um <laughs> yeah so yeah, yeah and so then out, and when you get out of the military it doesn't go away so the, the 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 people who own the corporation that owns that technology broadcast whatever it wants for the rest of your life so you think you're married but you're really not it's a mannequin <laughs> yeah 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 um so it's crazy that's pretty crazy stuff um uh yeah so that's black mirror uh maybe i'll, I'll maybe i'll get the guy who made that on one day i don't know we'll see we'll see uh maybe maybe jay knows him too i don't know <laughs> uh, <to> ask me <laughs> yeah 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 Maybe I can get maybe I'll get Jane on one day. That's one. He he did some cyberpunk stuff. Yeah, Aliens is. Yeah, maybe I I already talked to him on Skype one time, but I have to go through the proper channel about it. We'll see about it. Um, I know he's a busy guy. He's got lots of company to run. So. Oh yeah, but I'm sure he still would if you had to talk to him, told him what it was about. Oh okay, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll I'll de yeah, I'll definitely I'll definitely I'll definitely give it a shot because uh, he has some great stuff under his he, belt. So he's got. A Crazy stuff, man, including like, like working on actual James Bond films and shit. Right, yeah, because he had movie and game and all kinds yeah. of experience. He's got a really big like history though in both both game and film. Right, right. I think MGM was it Metro Goldwyn. Yeah, yeah, it was. I talked to him one time. Uh, well, I, I was kind of, I was like blown away. I was like, "Wow, is that really this guy who made Alien vs Predator and all those movies and 007?" And he's like talking to me about New Feud, and he's like, "That's pretty crazy." I was, I was kind of like, I, I kind of like almost had a meltdown that day because I was like, "What the shit? This is the guy um, that made this is crazy, right?" I mean, I don't know, I don't know what it was like meeting him for the first time for you, but it was pretty crazy. It, it was, it was head spinning. You got to think it was. I'd, I was halfway through making Neon Sword and. He come along and he was like, "Oh, I really like the looks of it. It, it reminds me of um, Syndicate when I was working on that." It, I was like, "Oh man, this is amazing!" <laughs> I, yeah. Oh yeah, Syndicate. So he 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 worked on Syndicate too. Then. Yeah. yeah wow, well, yeah. yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was saying like it reminds me of Syndicate a little bit, some parts of it. But yeah, that's wow. So he would be the perfect guy to talk to then, I guess, about that kind of stuff because he's already. Kind of done some parts of things like Neon Sword, right? I mean, like that's like, yeah, yeah. He's worked on loads of like pretty dark shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Dark Seed um, definitely is dark. Um, so, all right. So, I like to thank my guest Japes uh, from P Head Games, uh, creator of Neon Sword, which is coming soon, twenty eighteen. You can check it out right now. Just Neon Sword on IndieDB. Um, you can check it out. Yeah, and uh, James, where can we find you and your stuff? Um, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> there are PA Games on Twitter, um, Instagram, Facebook, and wherever else I can put it. <laughs> okay, so PA Games. If it's, is it? Is it? Uh, P. I mean, just I think it's P Head Games. Yeah, yeah. P Head at P Head Games at Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. And yeah, anyway, this is Silver Spook. Um, you can find me at uh, silverspookgames.com. I, I actually, I'll say it this time because people might have forgotten. You Silver Spook, at, Silver Spook minus the E on Twitter because my name's too long. Silver Spook Games on Facebook. Silver Spook. Uh, it, Neo Feud is the game. It's on Steam. Uh, Neo Feud is on also itch.io. It's also on sale. So go buy it right now. Um, yeah, so Neo Feud is the game. If you want to support me, I'm also on Patreon. Um, the podcasts and all these live streams and stuff is supporting my patreon will also support the podcasting and as well as future games from service games yeah any final any any final words for our listeners no thanks for having me